My name is Slobodan Mitrovic. Today I will tell you about our recent rake on generating random walks. And this is a joint rake on, uh, with uh, Jakub Wodski, Krzysztof Honak and Piotr Sankowski. Random walks uh, is a primitive that has many applications, especially in graph theory. It includes web rating, special graph partitioning, property testing and many others. The main question that we ask in this rake is how to compute random walks and more specifically how to compute them in a small number of parallel steps and as a result uh, we show that it is possible to compute uh, random walks of length l uh, one walk uh, per vertex all of them simultaneously and all the walks being independent and all of that in uh, only polylog l uh, many steps and by using memory which is slightly uh, super linear um, Good, and when we instantiate this result uh, in MPC setting, uh, then we get um, a way to compute uh, uh, random walks in unrated graphs in log m rounds. Again, uh, one walk per vertex and all of them independent. For directed graphs, we get uh, log square L rounds. Uh, we also show how to approximate page rank and uh, we get um, approximation in log log n square uh, plus log square one over epsilon many rounds, where epsilon is teleportation probability. Now to contrast this to prior work, uh, this essentially gives uh, nearly exponential improvement uh, compared, uh, compared, to the, compared to the prior work. Um, okay, so uh, I'm not going into details uh, of MPC because all what I'm going to describe uh, will apply, uh, will be independent of model of computation. And by using some standard techniques, these ideas that I will show, they can be uh, transformed uh, in MPC. Uh, good. So um, the rest of this talk will be structured in the following way. First, we will talk about random walks, uh, but in underrated graphs. Then from there, we will move to discussion about page rank, but now uh, even uh, in direct graphs. And having page rank as a primitive, we will go back again to random walks, but now in direct graphs and show how to and show how to compute. So the first part is uh, constructing random walks in unrated graphs. Now, the most basic approach or the simplest approach to generate a random walk of length L starting at three is to uh, repeatedly for L, L steps perform the following from a current vertex, you sample random neighbor and you move to this neighbor. And that's it, in L steps you get random walk. Now idea is to use a stitching or doubling and to get this uh, computation, to perform this computation faster. So instead of uh, generating one uh, a random walk of length L from V, we will generate from each vertex in the graph a random walk of length L over two. Now let's say V might generate uh, this purple walk and they can W of length L over two and W might generate this green walk. Now, once we have these two walk, all we need to do is to stitch them together. And this would give us one walk of length L that starts at V, okay? And this is great. Now we can repeat this idea recursively for length L over two, L over four, and so on, giving us uh, an algorithm that runs in log L many steps and generates, uh, generates this walk. Now, uh, there, is a certain, uh, there is a certain obstacle with this approach, namely, it feels like there are so many walks being generated uh, at the same time. And, and, and uh, recall that you want to generate one walk, per, one walk per vertex, right? And the question simply is how, for instance, W or any other vertex will know a priori how many walks will end at this vertex and then ask W to, uh, to, stitch, uh, to stitch something that, uh, that uh, run the walk that is running from W, right? And there is a relatively simple answer to this, which is just follow station distribution. And as a reminder, if you are given a walk matrix uh, W, then station distribution is probability distribution such that pi times W is equal to pi. And I'll be using pi to denote station distribution of the, uh, of the, of the, of the walk matrix of, of interest. Uh, okay, so it is, uh, again, the idea is simply follow station distribution. What do I mean by this is the following. Each vertex, each vertex V, will compute the number of walks which is proportional to pi of v. Okay, so each vertex will do this simultaneously. And now there is something very nice uh, that will happen out of this. In expectation, after 
uh, after t steps for any t, we know that uh, because of properties of station distribution, that there will be pi of v many walks ending at v, right? So just by the, by the fact that we are following pi actually would allow us would allow us to in in advance to know how many walks will be ending at each vertex. And now this resolves the issue that we saw on the previous slide. Okay, so just to summarize, uh, following pi and more importantly, being able to compute pi actually uh, is very beneficial. And there is also some other um, property uh, which was very, which is implicit here, but is very important that the memory requirement is inversely proportional to the minimum entry of pi. And uh, for directed graphs, we know that the minimum of entry of pi is one divided by two m, uh, which is good enough good enough for us. It means that the memory requirement will be proportional to two m, which is uh, which is okay now. Okay, good. Now it seems that we had success with this teaching or doubling idea when it comes to undirected graph. So the question is, can we use the same idea for directed graphs? Well, let us see. So for undirected graphs, we said. First of all, it's easy to compute pi. Pi of v is the degree of v divided by 2m. And moreover, pi of v is very nicely lower bound. It has a small lower bound. Now, when it comes to directed graphs, it's hard to compute pi, right? We don't know how to do it very efficiently. Uh, moreover, if someone hands us pi on a silver plate, it is still uh, that uh, pi of v can be as low as 1 over 2 to the n, which means that the memory requirement would depend on 2 to the n, which is too much. So we don't want this, okay? So we have to do something else. And now this brings us to page. So let me start by just recalling the definition of page. So here is, uh, let us first look at this uh, matrix pi. This matrix pi is essentially a Volk matrix in graph G. G uh, here denotes uh, adjacency matrix, and D is the diagonal degree matrix, okay? So this is a Volk matrix. And now <coughs> matrix T uh, uh, can be, uh, matrix T is also a matrix, but uh, uh, it has the following meaning. With probability one minus epsilon, uh, we will follow P, uh, that is just a regular random walk, standard random walk in the graph. And with probability epsilon, we will jump to a random vertex in the graph. And this epsilon is also what is called pro, uh, teleportation, uh, teleportation probability. So T is just a mixture of these two uh, of these two walks. And now station distribution of T is some is is an object that you call uh, that you call page junk. And we are interested in computing uh, page junk of this uh, walk matrix T. Okay, uh, good. Now uh, if you look back at what is simple, what is hard, we said that uh, uh, station distribution for uh, random walks in the graph is difficult to compute. It can be super small. Okay, now let's look what happens with page rank. For page rank, we still don't know how to compute. Okay, but there is now something really nice that happens here that uh, uh, page rank, the minimum page rank is lower bounded by epsilon divided by n. And think of epsilon as being some low, uh, small constant, at least, uh, at, least, at least for the moment. And this is actually pretty cool because, uh, because this now, uh, assuming that you would know pi, this would enable us to use this teaching idea that you saw before, okay? And this is really one of the key properties that we use in our approach, okay? Cool. Now, the question is how in general we could compute page rank. And there is a result from 2002 that says that pretty much approximating page rank boils down to computing n log n short random walks. And when I say short, I mean random walks of length log n over epsilon, um, and there again, if you think of epsilon being constant, so pretty much uh, walks of length log n. But this is very good news for undirected graphs because we just said a couple of slides ago that we know how to compute very efficiently uh, random walks for undirected graphs. So that means that just by using this result, we can approximate page rank in undirected graphs. But still, the question is what to do with directed, uh, with directed page rank? And here is now one of very important ideas that we develop in this thread, which is just the idea of transitioning uh, from undirected to directed uh, to directed graph. And let me now explain it more. So first of all, input graph is G, but I will use G of U to denote 
I'm directed version of this graph G. So just just uh, just ignoring orientation of the edges. But G of B would essentially be still this input directed graph. Okay. So and we just said that computing paint jump for uh, of, of G U is, is simple, but for G D we still don't know. Now we will introduce, uh, introduce a new object, uh, a new graph which is called G J. This graph G J is a mixture of uh, GU and GD. It is 1 minus J divided by log log n of GU and J divided by log log n of GD. And uh, the way you should think about the random walk in graph GJ is as follows. For every edge uh, in, G, uh, in GJ of a random walk in GJ, the probability 1 minus J divided by log log n you would follow undirected version of G and with the remaining probability you would follow a directed version of G. And in particular, uh, G0 uh, means that you are entirely following undirected version of G, and G log log n is directed version of G. It is the graph that we want to get at the end. Okay? So, in particular, it means that we know how to compute page rank for G0. Now, we will use page rank, uh, the, this, this, uh, the fact that we know how to compute page rank in G0, then we will sample a random walks, page rank random walks in G, G0, and uh, we will uh, transform, we will use these walks from G0 to get random walks in G1. And on the next slide, I will show you how to transform walks from, G, uh, from, from GJ to GJ plus one. Now, by using the theorem that we said before, uh, from 2002, together with random walks in G1, we, we can approximate page rank in G1. Now we'll apply the same idea for G2. We will, from G1, we will uh, sample, uh, generate uh, walks in G2, and together with this the theorem from, 2000, uh, from 2002, we will generate page rank for G2, and so on. So we will just continue this process step by step, and then eventually we will be able to generate page rank walks in G2, okay? But there are many questions that, that uh, one has to answer here. And so let me start by telling you how actually to generate, uh, how actually to use GJ to generate, uh, to generate uh, random walks in GJ plus one. The idea is uh, fairly simple. We will use rejection sample. Namely, uh, input, uh, uh, input uh, to procedure would be a random walk uh, in GJ and output would be a walk in GJ plus one or fail, okay? And this fail will come from rejection sampling. Now we will perform a certain rejection sampling on each edge of W in GJ uh, independent, okay? And so here is rejection sampling, uh, here are specifics for this rejection sampling. Uh, so uh, e, uh, edge E, which is in W, is coming from the following probability distribution. Uh, it is coming from undirected version of the graph with probability 1 minus j divided by log log n, and with the remaining probability is coming from gd, right? So this is just by definition of gj. Now, we will perform the following rejection sampling. If edge e is sampled from direct version from the graph, we accept, okay? We just keep edge as it is. Now, if it's coming from undirected version of the graph, with probability one divided by j plus one, we reject, okay? We reject this edge and we reject the entire walk w, or otherwise we keep this edge. One can show that this rejection sampling uh, would actually uh, be sampling edges uh, with respect to definition of gj plus one. It's really easy exercise to show that actually this sampling follows the right distribution, okay? But here is this rejection probability, and the question is, how much this rejection actually affects us, right? What do I mean by this? I mean, an edge is rejected with probability one divided by j plus one. So it means that the whole walk is accepted with probability one minus one divided by j plus one to the power of length of a walk. And we said that it suffices for us to look at walks of length log n over epsilon. And think of epsilon at least for the moment as being a constant. Good, so if j is at least log log n over two, well, this probability is, uh, then this acceptance probability is kind of nice. It is n to the minus little of one, okay? So 
Uh, this is fairly nice. Uh, it means that uh, out of enter the some little O of one uh, box that we sample in GJ, one of them will actually uh, be good. We will be transferred to GJ plus one, and this is nice. And this is also uh, the part why we need uh, slightly super linear memory uh, to to perform this approach. Now the trouble is when J is very small. Let's say if J is one then the probability of acceptance is zero, okay? Like this is a really bad situation. And, and uh, the reason for this is that if you look at G0, and I had said that uh, GJ is a mixture of undirected and directed version of the graph. But if you look at G0, it doesn't have any directed version of the graph. It is purely uh, uh, undirected version of the graph. So how can you even extract any directed version of the graph if you, you don't have any to begin with, right? So this is now the question, and this is the reason why when J is very low, this procedure, this uh, uh, rejection sampling is not going to work. And here is a new idea. Pretend that some of the edges of undirected version actually are from directed graph and hope that, uh, that this is going to be right. And here is now uh, in, in, uh, in a more detail, uh, let me describe in a more detail what I mean by this. Let us look at vertex V. Vertex V has some outgoing edges, which are yellow, and some incoming edges, which are green. Uh, now, if we think of undirected version of this graph, and V wants to sample a random, a random neighbor, now in undirected version, it's fine if V, if v samples either green or yellow edges. It doesn't matter. But if you think of directed graph, uh, v, uh, v is allowed only to sample yellow edges. But now look, look at this example. Even if we sample any of the neighbors, green or yellow edges, it will be one half. The sampled edge is going to be from directed graph. And this is pretty good for us. It means that, you know, uh, even if we try to follow undirected version with probability one half, this edge will come from directed graph. Right? And we can, in this way, we can inject some directed edges, even if we are looking into undirected version of our graph. Okay? So this example is very nice, but here is now then this example on the right, right where in degree of O in V is N, but our degree is only one. So now if uh, we try to sample uh, any edge from V, very likely, it is going to actually be incoming edge. It is going to be green edge. But we actually would like to sample yellow edge, right? And probability of sampling yellow edge here is one or n, which is which is actually very bad. Uh, it's not something that you would like. It's very again uh, having this kind of example is hard to inject directedness by following undirected undirected version of the graph, right? Uh, now, uh, here is at least something that you learn, that if out degree divided by total degree is relatively large, think of being some constant, then we're happy, like it's good. It means that there is some decent chance that taking undirected step, undirected edge will actually be a directed edge, so it's good. But if this ratio is small, then it's bad. And here is another idea that you use, right? Why not just transform the graph so that out degree divided by degree is always large, right? And the question is how to do this. Okay, so here is our example that we saw previously. And now instead of one vertex V, we will have actually log N vertices, which will progressively reduce incoming degree to V. Okay, so here is what I mean. We will start with V on the right side. It will have outgoing edges. It will have yellow edges, just as this version on the left side. Now we will create new vertex V log N which will have all the green incoming edges. But now this V log N will not go directly to V, but it will go to V log N minus one vertex, which will have N over two parallel edges going between V log N and V log N minus one. You see, now, uh, now, this, uh, the, now the number of incoming edges to V log N is halved, but if you look at the ratio of outgoing and incoming edges to V log N, uh, it's still uh, it's still pretty it's still pretty large, and now we will repeat this again. Uh, and from v log n minus one, we will have n over four parallel edges to v log n over two. And as you are guessing, we will repeat this process log n many times 
until the number of incoming edges to V will be exactly two. Okay? And this is now great because even if V has only one outgoing edge, the ratio between outgoing edge and incoming edges will be at least one over three. And this is really good. Okay? And, and that's it. And so we perform this transformation and then we apply all the things that you saw, uh, all, all the things that you already described, and this is how you get page rank. Okay, good. So we are now done with page rank. And what remains to be discussed is how to use page rank so to, gen to, so to generate a random box indirectly with us. Okay, good. And here is now the idea. On input, you get the rated graph, you get length L, and you want to generate a walk of length L in GT. <clears throat> and so what you do, you return a page rank walk of length L, where you set epsilon to be one over L. Now, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's easy to see that with constant probability, this walk, page rank walk that you return is not going to have any random jump. But if a page rank walk doesn't have any random jump, it means that the walk followed uh, the, 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 the normal, the standard, the regular graph walk uh, uh, during, uh, during the algorithm, right? So you can as well just return this walk uh, as, a, as a random walk in GT, okay? And that's fantastic, right? Uh, but now here you will probably ask, well, is it really the case that we can make epsilon as small as we like at no cost? And several times in this talk, I said that you should think of epsilon as being a small constant, but something is, is fishy in the way I'm saying this. And you are right to be suspicious. In fact, if you look at one of the, if you, just as a reminder, at one of the slides, we said that walk is accepted with probability one minus one over log log n to log n over epsilon. If epsilon is, if epsilon is less than one over log n, this probability is super small, not something that we can afford. Right, so it's not true that we can set epsilon to be arbitrarily small and pay no price, okay? So this idea alone is not going uh, to work. But what, what actually uh, we do, uh, we can handle a smaller epsilon the same way as we handled at the same, in a similar manner, not the same way, but in similar manner as we made this transition from directed to undirected graph, which is as following. So first, uh, we would start. Uh, we would start with epsilon being one half, and then we will transition, reduce epsilon step by step, step by step by using similar rejection sampling, uh, reduce epsilon step by step until we get epsilon prime. Uh, and for this process, uh, we would need only log one over epsilon prime many steps. Okay. And again, rejection. We would apply the similar rejection sampling as before. And that's it. So just to summarize what we first do, we will transform the graph so that our degree divided by degree is at least one third. Then we will transition, we would fix epsilon, the portation probability will be one half and we will transition from undirected to directed version of the graph. And finally, once we go to directed version, we would work on directed version uh, for the rest and we would reduce epsilon from one over two to one over L and that's it. And this is the whole approach, okay? This now concludes the approach, and just for the end, I would like to leave with an open question. Uh, there, uh, the, the, there are a couple of questions, some of uh, those um, kind of more direct ones, how to reduce the round complexity from log log square uh, n to uh, log log n. But there is also one very in particular interesting question, which is how to reduce the memory consumption, the memory requirement uh, uh, from being uh, super linear in n to something which is only n polylog. And by this, I will conclude. Uh, thank you for following this presentation.